Hey guys, in this video I am going to review this 48 volts battery, 100 amp power capacity from Energy Future Green and this is going to be most detailed and in-depth testing for this type of battery. In this video I am going to test capacity for this battery at 0.2 C rating, at 1 C rating. I will test high voltage disconnect, low and high temperature disconnect. I will try to connect this battery via CAN bus to solar converter. We will see if it's going to communicate. And of course, I'm going to disassemble this battery to see how well it's built inside. And right now I'm going to do capacity test. Before that, I did cycle this battery five times. And if we check on the BMS right now, we have voltage 54.29 volts. So I'm going to enable inverter to charge the battery with 20 amps and the charging voltage is 57.6 volts per specification for this pack which is going to be 3.6 volts per cell we charging with 22 amps and voltage is 55.1 volts so i guess cell number 16 will first reach 3.7 volts which is a disconnect voltage in the bms for this pack reaching 3.7 volts and uh, 55.9 voltage on this pack and uh, Maybe you hear this click, relay disconnected battery from inverter. And now I'm going to reset this meter and we'll do capacity test. Right here I'm running test where we draw 20 amps and uh, for six minutes right now. And let's come back in five hours and we'll see the results. And the test just finished, it took four hours, 58 minutes. We've got 101 amp power capacity, five kilowatts, 240 watt hours. And let's see voltage difference. The specification for this battery is pretty standard. It's 51.2 volts, 100 amp hours. On the side right here, we can see operating temperature and the um, charge and discharge recommended current in 0.2 C, which is 20 amps. And the maximum charging and discharge current is 100 amps. On the front cover of this battery, we have LEDs to check what is the state of charge, if we do have any alarms and if battery is working. And then we have the screen where we can see more detailed information. If we press on the screen, we see this welcome menu and uh, then we can read some information. In analog info, we can see what is the pack voltage, what is the percentage going in or out from a battery. Then on the temperature, we can see information from four, four temperature sensors located on the cells and the two additional sensors located on a BMS. Uh, then we can see individual cell voltage for all 16 cells. And uh, in the cell capacity, we can see what is the state of charge, what is the amp hours for our battery, what is the remaining and how many cycles we did. Then on the BMS status, we can see that it's charging right now. Then on the record, we can see if any protection happened, short current protection, over and under temperature protection, over current protection, under voltage and over voltage. Then on the BMS status, we can see if any of these events happening right now. Then parameter settings. And the system settings is just the communication speed for this battery. And that's all information we can read from this screen. And here's a battery fully disassembled. We have 16 cells. Each cell is 100 amp hour or 320 watt hours. Right here we can see some serial number or maybe part number. And each cell on the one side has this uh, soft material to prevent cells rubbing from each other and moving inside the box. Then right here is a battery management system and the communication board on the bottom right, right there I can see many MOSFETs but looking at capacitors looks like this BMS doesn't have active balancer because when I disassembled JK BMS it has something like 20, 20 volts um, uh, capacitors and uh, this used to, to do active balancing for the cells right here I can see 100 volts capacitors which looks like capacitors for entire uh, battery bank and then for disconnect we have two options to disconnect this battery first is a button on the box right here this power button and then we have these um, circuit breakers 
This is 125 amp hour circuit breaker and what is interesting, this circuit breaker is rated for alternating current, so it's not rated for DC power. I even purchased uh, another circuit breaker on eBay, it's exactly the same breaker and I did my own test with uh, 125 plus amps to see how it's gonna work with disconnect. I was expecting it's gonna burn. Uh, but uh, you can see results later in this video for testing this circuit breaker. Then if we look inside right here in the box uh, for battery compartment, it it's all has this soft material. So cells were nicely secured in this box. It's separated from electronic parts. And uh, then for uh, terminals and for temperature sensors, we had two, those two metal plates. And uh, then we have four temperature sensors installed on the cells. One, two, and then this is number three and number four. And uh, that's it about internal components for this battery. The battery was just fully recharged. We are at 100% SOC. I did reset meter and I'm going to apply one C rating, five kilowatt for this battery. And we will see how this is gonna handle this load. Let's come back in about 30-40 minutes and we'll see what is the temperature for wires and the cells. If we look at this box, it's made from pretty thick metal and the weight for this box from this car about 9 to 10 kilos. And um, right here on this side, uh, I think quality could be improved for this box. You can see where uh, it was bended. You, uh, right here is all of these edges, some dents and the imperfections of paint job. On the back of this box, right here is the two large brackets which are supposed to go in the contact with this plate and this plate connects into the wall and then pretty nice and secure connections of the of them. On the front cover, this is, could be separately removed by unscrewing all of these uh, bolts, bolts on the perimeter. And then on the back side, we have just a screen with the buttons and LED to see what is the quick status of the battery. Now I'm going to test communication between battery BMS and the Solark inverter. I did connect this Ethernet cable to Solark battery CAN bus and I did connect this to CAN bus right here. And then in the Solark we have to go to battery setup, enable BMS lithium battery and after that we have lithium battery information so we can read information from um, the battery. At the first attempt it didn't work, so I went to documentation and I found that uh, on a battery for CAN bus it's using pin number 4 and 5 for communication and pin number 7 for ground. But in the solar documentation I found that for CAN bus it's using 4 and 5 pins also for, high, for communication and pin number 2 is a ground. So I have to cut this cable and uh, redo connections and after doing that it did work. And uh, just quickly explain why we need this communication. Uh, if for example we are charging our battery and one of the cells reaching high voltage, 
without communication what's going to happen bms will cut power from charger or inverter and the potentially it could damage uh, equipment when we do have communication bms before cutting power it will send signal to inverter and will let this know that we need to stop charging uh, battery so instead of cutting power it will tell uh, other source inverter or charger to stop doing that and now right here is a test setup what i did i disconnected cell number three sensing lead right here so it's not connected to the cell anymore and uh, connected this to power supply so we can simulate high voltage disconnect and right now we're charging battery with uh, 1.3 kilowatts and what i'm going to do just to increase voltage on cell number three and we will see if it's going to cut the power so I'm going to do about 3.6 volts. Now let's see on the inverter side. Now I, see, I can see this exclamation mark. And in theory, it should start reducing charging power. Yeah, and it's happening right now. So it was charging with 1.3 kilowatts and now it's dropping charging. And it just stopped charging. So here's a confirmation that this battery could communicate with the inverter. In the package with the battery, we're getting user manual, inspection report for lug bolts, anchor bolts, this mounting bracket, and battery itself. I did calculate price difference between do-it-yourself battery and uh, this battery. For components, I did use exactly the same 16 cells, JK BMS with one amp active balancing. Then uh, I found suitable enclosure for 16 cells and then we have to buy circuit breakers, wires, fuses and the uh, lug nuts. So the total price for all components is going to be about $1,200. And uh, this battery costs today $1,900. With a coupon code we can get this for $1,700. So the difference between do-it-yourself and uh, this battery is $500. Here is my final thoughts after testing this battery. I will start with a negative item that I found and uh, it is cell imbalance. When, when I did charge this battery, I did see huge cell imbalance. And if you're using simple charger or inverter, when BMS is going to disconnect this battery, it could potentially damage your equipment. Then on the positive side, I do like to see multiple form factors. You have choice how to mount this battery on the wall vertically or horizontally or using server rack mount. Second positive item is a full capacity at 1C rating. I did test many lithium iron phosphate or lithium ion batteries and it's first time when I do see full capacity at 1C rating. And number three is the communication. It's uh, great to see that this battery could communicate with multiple inverters and uh, this communication will add a lot of stability to solar system. Instead of relying to BMS to connect and disconnect charge or discharge, having this communication is a huge plus. And the items that could be improved first is the paint quality i did see many imperfections outside of this box on the paint quality so i think it, it could be improved next improvement is a high temperature disconnect i did test that it's disconnecting cells at 65 celsius but because temperature sensors located on the top of the cells between cells it could be much higher than 65 celsius so it's going to be great if we do have ability to adjust high and low temperature disconnect using some kind of software. Next improvement is a screen. Default timeout is about 15 to 20 seconds. We cannot change this. And when screen is shutting down, it's resetting state where I was. For example, if I did watch cell temperature and screen shut it down, when I wake up this, it's going to home screen. So I have to navigate back. And the last improvement is a AC rated circuit breaker. It's going to be nice to see that we have proper DC rated circuit breaker. Even we did test with a 300 amps current breaker and it did work. In the long term, we might see arc and it's going to blow. All right, guys, that's all about this video. I hope you did like this review. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.